Hi, I'm Pat, and welcome back to my garage. Today, we're going to replace something in the BMW i8 as preventive maintenance. The part that we're going to replace is called the pivot and spring. The pivot is this piece of plastic here, and inside there is a spring, which keeps the rear deck lid under pressure so that when you unlock it, it pops up. Unfortunately, over time, this piece of plastic develops a stress crack and, of course, the spring comes out. There are some photographs that I found on the BMW i8 forum on Facebook. If you own a BMW i8 and have not checked out this Facebook group, please check the link in the description below. If it wasn't for that group, I wouldn't have known about this potential problem in my BMW i8. So let's take our key fob and we'll press the hatch unlock button and you can see that it gives me the ability to stick a few fingers in here and pull up. This is where the pivot is located. All right, if we press in on it, you can see that it's under pressure. If we take a closer look at it, we can see that it is marred. Where this contacts the vehicle, it's definitely wearing through the plastic. And if we take a look at where it impacts the vehicle, we could see down here that's actually leaving a little bit of a mark on the carbon fiber as well. So I believe it's important to replace this part before it actually breaks and also keep a spare inside the car. If you've seen my fuse replacement video, link in the description below, you'll know that I like to keep a Torx driver in the car with me, and that's in order to access the fuse panel underneath the glove box. Well, I'm back again with the same part. <laughs> this is the uh, Molework that I have a link to in the description below, and it comes with a lot of different bits, and this is the T20 bit, the same bit that I used in order to access the fuse panel. I'm going to use that in order to take this piece off and replace it. The parts that we're also going to need in order to do this project is the replacement pivot. I'm putting a new spring in here as well as a new O-ring. Now the link in the description will have all the part numbers and a good place to find these parts. So let's get started. First I'm going to take my T20 Torx bit and loosen up these screws. I could feel that this entire unit is under pressure, so I'm going to back these screws out slowly. I don't know the exact depths of these. Well, there's one screw. And there's the other screw. Let's take a closer look at this device. There's a plastic housing and a spring that goes inside of the pivot. We have the pivot itself that comes out and the O-ring which goes between the pivot and the housing. That's coming out as well and that has some sort of a uh, grease on it as well. So I'm going to go ahead and clean these parts up, as well as the part on the car, and uh, we'll go ahead and replace what we got with new pieces. Now we'll just take a closer look here. We could see the tapped holes for our screws. We could see uh, the deepness of where this holds our pivot point and our spring, and we could see a good weld. Everything looks great here. So we'll go ahead and get our new pieces together and installed on the i8. And I have some dielectric grease here. This is a Permatex brand, and I'm going to use this in order to lube up that O-ring. So we're just going to make sure that the O-ring is covered in some lubricant, and this helps seal out any moisture. It's always best to have some type of uh, uh, grease on here in order to seal out any type of uh, water or moisture. 
And this is our plastic housing. And I'm gonna go ahead and place the O-ring inside this hole after I've already cleaned it up. And that fits perfectly right into place. Next, I'm gonna grab our new pivot. And I'm going to place that into the housing. Before I place the new spring into the housing, I compared it to the old spring. The old spring is on the right. It's actually a few millimeters shorter than the new spring. So this may have been in the car since new. This is a 2015, it's now 2019, so it's four years old. I think it was pretty much due for replacement. I'm gonna take the replacement spring and place that right inside the pivot. So here we are, it's ready to go. So I'm gonna take my housing and I'm gonna insert the spring into the socket here and push it up into place. and then start the screws by hand. There's one started. I'll grab my Torx bit. Okay, that's starting to go. Then we'll grab the other side and install that screw. And I'm going to start to turn these in while maintaining pressure on this spring. I'm going to switch sides so that I can run these screws in evenly, or as even as I can. I gave it a few pushes to make sure that the spring is well aligned, and it is. The housing feels like it's on there correctly. I'm just gonna make sure that these screws are snug down. And they are. Finally, we're gonna close the deck lid and make sure that everything fits well. So we'll start with pulling down the deck lid and once I get around this height, usually what I do is I just let it go. Some people prefer to put their hand on the glass and push down. I don't really like that for the simple fact that I gotta clean the glass. So I try to get it to about this height and give it a little bit of a tug. My hand's out of the way. It shuts just like it normally would. It's got a perfect fit. No complaints. So some final thoughts on this project. Well, it was easy to do. And I think it's great preventive maintenance in order to prevent you from having an issue in the near future. But it doesn't mean that it can't break on the road. So I decided to pick up a spare set of spring and pivot and O-ring and even uh, screws as well, because I don't know if something may happen where these screws will no longer hold as well as they should. So I'm keeping this in the glove compartment of the car. In my previous video, I suggested making sure that you take some extra fuses along, so I built this little fuse kit, and it contains all the small fuses and the standard size automotive fuses, as well as a fuse checker. But finally, having this T20 bit, this really saves you, because it allows you to change the fuses, as well as change this pivot point. And honestly, if you ever get into a problem on the road where this cracks, and there's no way to fix it, you gotta try to find a dealer or parts supplier that has this. I8 parts are rare. So I really strongly advise ordering a set like this, ordering a kit like this, or if you have a T20 bit and a driver, keeping it in the car, as well as spare fuses. Of course, I have links in the description to everything that I use today. If you're interested, check them out. If not, and you have the parts already, great. But don't go out unprepared. 
This effectively ends today's video. If you enjoyed the content, please give it a big thumbs up. If you're interested in seeing other videos that I've produced, please click the subscribe button and ring the notification bell as I try to put out new content very often. And if you like this video, also share it with your i8 friends who they may want to know. I need to keep this stuff in my car so I can prevent future problems on the road. And as always, thanks for watching, have a great day, and happy motoring. Thank mm -hmm. you.